apologize to everyone for being away for a while. Uh, you may or may not have noticed. Um, if you watched my last video, and I'll try to link to it here, if not, I'll link to it in the description box. Um, I'm, I showed how to make some gnomes, and that really went a little crazy, and I was inundated with orders for gnomes, so that's what was taking up all my kiln time. So I couldn't really intersperse it with making this project. This project actually does take a long time, and this is why the video is so long as well, so I apologize for that. I, uh, I tried to speed up. I tried to speed through a lot of things in the video, so you'll see a lot of high-speed moments in it, uh, so that the video wouldn't be too long. I also had some family over, and so I took a bit of a break from... Uh, working with glass. I hadn't seen my parents in two years, so I wanted to spend time with them. So in this project, I will be doing some freeze and fuse elements. I've always wanted to try this technique and it really is very versatile and a lot of fun. You can do so much with it. So um, I will show two different methods of doing freeze and fuse. So the bats, and the pumpkin and these guys were made in one method and this owl that we have over here was made using a different method because it has so much detail in it so there was so there's the freeze and fusing of the elements and then we stencil on some powder frit and we tack fuse it then we tack fuse everything together and finally we slump it and we glue a background to it so we can have a candle. So let's get started. So this owl has a lot of details in it. And so I want to be very precise with what I'm putting in. So I'm going to put layers of colors. So for the little beak, I'm going to put in some canary yellow powder. I'm just using my tweezers to get a little bit of powder in there. Then I'm gonna use one of my brushes to brush the, the parts that have gone out back into that cavity. I'm also going to put yellow on the inside of the eyes for the irises. For the claws, I'm going to use some tangerine orange. going to use some warm white opal for the top of the head and the belly. Maybe do the orange around the eyes as well. And you see at this point I'm layering over what I've already done in with the previous section. Should have filled the wings out first. For the wings, I'm going to do a burnt and umber.
now we'll add the white elbow here. Let's see if I can get it up. I'm going to use my very scientific tool, the cut up straw. And I'm going to fill the whole thing with the last color that I want to put in, which is a woodland brown. Okay, and then the last step is going to be to add the water. For the pumpkin, which is just two colors, and the bats, which are going to be just one color, I'm going to use a different method. For the bats, I'm just going to be using some black. And for the pumpkin, I'll be using tangerine orange and light aventurine. So for the black, I'm just going to be putting some black powder frit into a small container. And the same for the tangerine. And it's okay if we do too much because whatever we have in excess, we can dry and put back into our containers. We're gonna add water. Mix it up. Then we're going to wait so that the water settles, or rather the uh, glass particles settle to the bottom, and then the water is on top, and then we'll just pour off the water and then put the powder frit, the wet powder frit into our mold. I didn't do the stem because then that is just so small that I don't need a whole container. I could just put it in at the end and just add a bit of water to it, like I did with the owl. So here you can see maybe how the water and the frit has separated. So I'm just going to pour off the water. And then I'm going to grab my molds and fill them up. I'm going to take a piece of paper towel and soak up any excess water that's on the surface and then clean up. Maybe tap it a few times to make sure that everything gets into the little crevices and there's no air bubbles.
and clean up the whole thing. We'll do the same with the pumpkin. For the stem, I'm just going to add some powder for it. That was messy. And you see the the excess water that was in the orange kind of transferred into the dry bits. So I don't need to add any water. And for this guy, We're going to use a dropper and add the water that way. You don't want to do it from too high. Um, because then the gravity and the pressure of the drop will kind of move the frit from its position. So you want it to be nice and close. And you want to make sure it gets into all enough water into all the nooks and crannies. I'm going to add a bit of frit to this. So you want the back to be completely flat or else it won't fuse properly. It'll get all wavy and get the shape will get distorted. I'm going to take these guys to the freezer for about 30 minutes to an hour and See how they come out. Here comes the moment of truth. Time to get them out of the molds. Ooh, that one came out nice. It's a few spots, but I guess that's okay. Ooh, came out a little more modeled than I had hoped for, but we'll see once it's, uh, once it fires what the colors actually look like. Ooh. 
just going to clean this one off a bit. It's got don't want to manipulate them because my hands are warm and they'll start melting them. Also off camera, I did a couple of tombstones and for this I mixed some white and black. Hopefully it gives us like a marbled effect. And I just did the, the technique where you just um, put the water on top in the container then i'm going to add some details maybe with some um, glass line paint and some more frit after and actually for this one i like that the bubbles showed up because it, it looks kind of like weathered So these tombstones actually came out of some ice cube trays. I didn't fill them all the way up because they're really, really deep. So now I'm going to be putting those in the kiln. The firing schedule for this project was suggested to me by one of my viewers named Christina. And thank you very much, Christina. Uh, she usually uses 96 COE, so I adapted it to 90 COE glass. You'll see there are many segments. It's very stepped in the way that it ramps up the uh, temperature. And the first segment is there really to dry out the pieces before it really starts to fire. So I'm very, very excited to see how these come up. I'm so happy with how these came out. They're solid glass. Isn't this so cool? Look at the bats. And the pumpkin and the owl. Look, look at his feet are so well defined. So we're going to put these aside and we're going to come back to them a little bit later and add a bit more detail to them. This is the mold that I'll be using. So you can see it's a semicircle, like half a cylinder. And so we'll be putting the piece on it and it will slump this way. And then we'll put a candle behind our glass and it'll give us a nice effect. So I measured the width of this piece. And it is seven inches. So that that's the measurement that really matters. So that's the maximum our piece will be or else it'll kind of bend on the sides if we make it any wider and the the height doesn't really matter we could do it whatever height we want apparently i forgot to record where i added the stencil onto my piece of glass uh, my piece of glass is cut in uh, seven inches wide and six inches tall the stencil that i created has kind of a spooky house up on a hill there's a bit of a cemetery and a fence and a tree. And then there's the moon in the top right hand corner. I covered the moon up uh, with another piece of uh, my stencil so that no powder comes on it. Because the first layer that I'll be putting on is the black powder for the, the house in the background. And there, I added also three windows to this. And I put little pieces of tape behind the windows to make it easier to remove after I put the frit on. Um, so here you saw me adding uh, my trusty gel all on the inside of the stencil where we're going to have the frit. This helps the stencil stick to the glass while I'm applying the frit so it doesn't move around. And any frit that goes on the stencil stays on the stencil, so we have a nice crisp image when we take the stencil off. I'm going to use my medium sifter to lay down some frit powder. I should have put a piece of paper like I usually do, but my son walked in 
and distracted me, so I forgot to do that. Piece of paper for those who haven't seen my videos before. It's to catch all the powder so we don't make a mess and then we could just put it back in the container. And now I can uncover this part and add the gel in there. I'm going to use the medium sifter again. And this is opaque white, so we, we want to go thick but not too thick because we want to let the light kind of come through. But at the same time, we want to do a special little effect. So we need it to be thick enough. So with a water dropper, I'm going to go in and add a few drops. And what that's going to do is it's going to create like a crater effect on the moon. Okay, so now I'm going to come in and see those little handles that we had. I'm going to come in and take the windows off. There we go. Nice and clean. Hopefully we could get the rest of the stencil off in one go without making a mess. So that makes me really, really happy. So we're going to take this to a tech fuse. And then we'll come back and add our decorative little elements. So our owl will be up here on a branch in front of the moon. So that'll, that'll be pretty cool. And then our gravestones will be on the bottom. And we'll have our bats flying over here. So here is our tack fused piece out of the kiln and I really love um, the different shades of black that we have here. It'll give a really nice um, effect when we have a candle. And my favorite part here is this moon and those little craters that we created by dropping some water on the frit. Those came out really nice. So the next step is to put our little decorative elements on it. But first, I kind of want to enhance these tombstones. They're kind of, they came out darker than I had hoped. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some glass lined paint and a brush and kind of dry brush some paint onto the surface. And I might even add just to, to the edge down here and a bit on the tombstones, a bit of a bit of pea pod green uh, powder frit to make it look like moss. I put the glass line in a little container and I'm going to use a brush and just kind of dab it on. And hopefully it gives um, a bit of a marble effect. Then I'll go in and remove it from the inside of the letters so that those come out really, uh, so the letters come out a little more crisp. Using my brush and some gel, I'm just going to add some here and there. Some 
and I'll remember to put my paper underneath. I'm going to use my small sifter and add some powder. I'm going to decide where I'm going to put everything. So I have this tombstone here. I still want to be able to see these two and I kind of want to wait, make sure that the weight is equal on both sides because I'm putting it on that domed mold. Um, you don't want it to tilt to one side more than the other. This one right there to put some gel behind here put this over here in the center put the bats up here and the owl over the moon. Like so. But he won't just be floating like that. I have these um, vitrograph stringers. I didn't pull them. I purchased them from JL Glass, who has an Etsy shop, and I'll link to the shop below. I love, love their stringers. They're so beautiful. So I'm going to cut this piece and put it here so it looks like there's a tree and there's a branch coming off and the owl is sitting on it. I'm going to add a couple of them. And that's it. So we're going to take this piece and we're going to fuse it. Tack fuse. So this is our piece out of the kiln after we tack fused. Unfortunately, I went a little too hot with my tack fusing, so we lost a little bit of detail, but it's still it's still there. It's still visible. Um, the peapod green didn't really show up. You really have to look closely on the tombstones to see it but it's okay so this is the slumping mold that we're going we're going to use and what i did was that i marked the center of the mold right here and on my my piece here i marked the center as well because i wanted to be centered so I'll just align these two like this and take it to the kiln to slump it and hope that it doesn't slide off and get all distorted of course I'm going to take these apart and reassemble it in the kiln to make sure that everything's aligned The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of clear tecta. I'm going to I'm going to cut it a little bit to make it uh, narrower or shorter. And this piece is going to be let's see if I can show you as wide as the base of the slumping mold. Our piece is going to slump on the outside, so we have to make sure that it's as it's wide as the outside uh, of the outside of the mold. And 
So I'll cut the piece about here. And what I want to do with this piece is I want to fire polish it just to round out at least this edge because then I'm going to go in and cut it to match my piece once it comes out of the kiln. I'll cut it to match the outside and I'll place it on the back of the piece. So this is going to be cut to match and it'll give and, and then it will cold fuse it. And cold fusing really is just gluing it on. And we'll cold fuse it to the back, the bottom back of the piece to give it more stability and to give somewhere for the candle holder to sit. So it all becomes one piece. So it's not like a candle holder and then the, the front. It'll be all one piece. And because of the weight of our Halloween um, scene, I don't want it to tip over. So this will help with stabilizing the whole piece. So here it is after it was slumped. It slumped perfectly. It didn't slide off or distort in any way. So I'm very, very happy. And this is the piece that I fire polished. I just wanted to round out the edges a bit so they're not as sharp. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to take this piece and put it above. And this is the actual candle holder that I'm going to be using. So this little looks like a shot glass, but it's a perfect size for tea candles like this. And so I'm going to take these three things and I'm going to align them. so that the candle holder doesn't go off the edge and to see where I need to cut this piece. So I'm going to trace it with a Sharpie on the inside edge. Of my piece. The camera above me makes it a little awkward. So I'm gonna cut this piece and then we'll assemble everything together. That was pretty good. Let's see. I'm just going to take this bit to the grinder and, and straighten off these edges. Okay, I've ground it down and it fits perfectly now. So I'm going to take some silicone glue and I'm going to glue the, the pieces together. Gonna use a Q-tip to spread some glue on the inside to secure it. I'm gonna put some on the bottom of this little cup. I'd use the tip, but it's there's dry glue in it, and so I can't use it anymore.
Okay, I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to leave it to dry overnight or at, for at least 24 hours and then we'll test it out. And what's good about our design is that you won't see any of this glue on the front because all the bottom of the design on the front is black frit. So it's well hidden. Here's our piece all done. It's one solid piece. I mean, I wouldn't try to start pulling this off, of course, but it is one piece. Um, I think it looks great. Uh, I had a lot of fun making this, and although it did take a really long time, it took quite a few days to make it, I did enjoy every single part of the process, and I hope you enjoyed it as well. If you did, please give this uh, video a like, and I love, love reading your comments, um, and I try to get back to you as soon as I can. I like to share the resources I use um, as much as possible. I'm going to leave you with a sh little short video of the candle in action in um, what may or may not be my bathroom, because that's the darkest room in my house. Um, so enjoy, and I'll see you for the next project.